Hi guys, Miss Glenn here. Welcome to math lesson number 13. We're gonna start today by counting by tens. When we count by tens, we skip count by groups of tens. So 10 and then 10 more is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. All right, so when we do this, we put both our hands up and we flash 10 more, 10 more, 10 more. So we'll start with 10. We're gonna do this three times all the way up to 100. So if you just wanna watch this first time, that's completely fine. Here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Second time, here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Last time, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Awesome job. I need you to put all 10 fingers back up. We're gonna play 10 and tuck really quickly. So we have 10 fingers up right now. I need you to tuck three fingers. How many fingers do we have left now? Seven, good. So we're, we're going to build some number sentences using those three numbers, 10, three, and seven. So what could our first number sentence be? Mm, well, how many did we tuck at first? Three. Plus, how many were left when we tucked that three? Seven equals a total of, how many do we have all together? 10. Three plus seven equals 10. Good job. Now we've kind of done this a little bit before, but we haven't put a name to it. So today we're gonna put a name to it, hands up. Say commutative property, commutative property, commutative property. Commutative property is when you switch the two parts in an addition sentence and it still equals the same thing. For example, if I put the seven first and the three next, it still equals 10. Commutative property. I had the seven and the three. Seven and three. If I have seven over here and three over here, I have 10 all together. If I switch them and I have seven over here and three over here, I still have 10 all together. That is commutative property. Okay, it's when you switch the parts and you still have the same amount, right? So what else can we do? We can write some more number sentences with these three numbers, three, seven, and 10. What if we put the whole number first? Yeah, we can do that. We can put the whole number first, but the important thing to remember, if we put the whole number first, we have to put the equal sign next because the equal sign is always next to the whole number. So 10 equals three plus seven. Right? And we can use commutative property here too. We can say 10 whole number, so equal sign comes next, equals commutative property, seven plus three. How many, how many expressions did we just write with those three numbers? We just wrote four expressions with those three numbers. Good job. All right, let's try another one. Both hands up. Ignore the numbers on my hands. I would like you to tuck one finger this time. Tuck one finger. How many fingers do we have left? Nine, so our numbers are one, nine, and 10 this time. 
Let's see, what can our first number sentence be? One plus nine equals 10. If I use commutative property here, what would my next number sentence be? Nine plus one equals 10. Good. And then I know I can put the whole number first. But if I put the whole, that doesn't look very good. If I put the whole number first, what has to come next? The equal sign 10 equals, we can say one plus nine, and then we can use commutative property and flip flop our parts and have 10 equals nine plus one. Good job. Go ahead and get your application journal or just a piece of paper is fine. If you don't have a journal or a whiteboard, whatever you have is perfectly fine. Flip to the next blank page and close your eyes to show me that you're ready to visualize our problem. When your eyes are closed, you're listening to the math problem. You're picturing it in, in your head, but you're also listening for those key words that we've been talking about, some and some more. Think about what it means if you hear those key words. Okay, here we go. Sammy had six bunnies. One of them had some babies. Now she has 10 bunnies. How many bunnies were born? Draw a picture to show how you know. Write a number bond and a number sentence to match your picture. Okay, let's see. Did anyone hear any key words in that math problem? Some, and if we hear our keyword some or some more, it tells us we're missing what? The part or the whole? We're missing a part, very good. So that's just something to keep in our mind as we are solving this problem. So we're gonna start with a drawing. How many bunnies did they have at first? Yeah, Sammy had six bunnies at first. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw six bunnies. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I drew them in the form of a 10 frame. There are my six dots that represent six bunnies. And then one of the bunnies had some babies, but it doesn't tell us how many. But we do know at the end there were 10 bunnies. So six to 10. So we're going to take this six and we're going to get it all the way up to 10. But we're going to switch to x's because then we'll be able to easily see how many were added so six seven eight nine ten stop that was our target number how many babies were born four babies were born good all right now we're going to make our number bond to go with our drawing but we're going to place our little question mark first our question mark is the part that we didn't have in the beginning. So what were we missing? We were missing a part, and we know that because we heard our keywords some. We were missing a part. So I'm gonna put my tiny little question mark in one of my part boxes here, just to remind me that's the number that I found. Then I'm gonna go back and fill in what I had at the beginning. They started with six bunnies, so that's our part that we had. What's our whole, what's our total? How many bunnies were there in all? 10, they ended with 10 bunnies, good. So what's the number that we found? How many babies were born? Four, good job. Four bunnies were born. Okay, now we have to write our number sentence. And remember, our number sentence goes right along with the story. So how many bunnies did they start with? Six bunnies. Plus, how many babies were born? Four equals a total of how many did they have in all? Ten. Good. Remember, we have to circle the number that we found. Which number did we find? We found the four. So I'm going to go ahead and put a circle around mm -hmm. that. We circle the four because it's the number that we found, right? That is our answer to our question. So how many babies were born? Four babies were born, good job. 
All right, you can put a smiley face or a star. I'm going to do a smiley face today. And I think I'm going to give them a little hat. Okay, there's my smiley face to show I rocked it. And we can put our application journal to the side. All right, now we are going to play a fun little math game, but I need you to close your eyes. No peeking. We're going to start with a number bond. Okay, you can look. Here we have a number bond. What do we see? We see a number bond. There's a four and a seven. What are we missing? Are we missing the part or the whole? We're missing a part. Yep, we're missing a part. What do we do if we're missing a part? Hmm. What do we do if we're missing a part? We put the part that we have in our head and count up to the whole. So four up to seven. Plant a four in your brain. Stopping at our target number seven. Here we go. Four, five, six, seven. Stop. How many did we need to get to seven? Three. Okay, let's see if that's our missing number. Drum roll, please. Yes, our missing part was three. Good job. Okay, let's try another one. Close your eyes. All right, open. What do we see? A number bond. We have eight and 11. Are we missing the part or the whole? We're missing a part. What do we do if we're missing a part? Count from the part that we have up to the whole. So plant what in your head? What number? Plant an eight in your brain. Here we go. Eight up to 11. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Hmm, what's our missing number? Three? Let's see, drum roll please. Yes, it is. We know that eight plus three equals 11. All right, let's try another one. Close your eyes, no peeking. Okay, you can look. Wait a minute. This is different than the other two that we just did. What's different? What's different? Are we missing the part or the whole this time? We're missing the whole this time. So we have to use a different strategy. When we're missing a part, we count part up to whole. When we're missing the whole, we add these two parts together. Okay, so I'm going to use my cubes here. And um, I'm gonna find my first part, five. So I'm gonna put out five cubes. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to put my next part. I have four. One, two, three, four. And I have to add them all together to find our total. So let's see, I know this is a group of five. So I'm gonna start at five and count on five, Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's see. Is our total nine? If I don't have cubes, here's another strategy that you can use. You can draw dots below. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's see if our total is nine. It is, good job. All right, so just to wrap it up, if we are missing a part, if we're missing a part, we count part up to whole. If we're missing the whole, we add the parts 
together. All right, two thumbs up, point them at yourself. Say, I am a mathematician. Good job, and I will see you next time.